All right, folks, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what you can use the anisotropic angle for inside of Substance Painter. I just made a video that introduced what is the anisotropic shader and so forth. And just through some experimentation, I could see how this can be very helpful. It's important to note, in this case, I'm using the Meets Matt's head, as you can see here. And you can see I've added the iron brush. And what's interesting, uh, by default, the iron brush has this line format. It's projecting in the UV the actual direction of the lines. Now, because the this sphere versus these lines are off by 90 degrees because the way the UVs have been laid out, I have to come in here and switch this out uh, from UV projection to triplanar projection. So now you can see all the lines actually line up. So this is without any anisotropic information added yet. So what I can do now is, as you can see in the pre previous example, I made a shader here that is the anisotropic material, which is the PBR metallic roughness anisotropic angle. Again, it's this little uh, yellowish type uh, icon. And I went ahead and added it within my texture sets uh, the anisotropic angle and the anisotropic level, which you just can add with this plus sign here. So what I'm going to do with this base material is I'm actually going to throw in the uh, level and start to increase that. So if I go to the low, I start painting the level information in. And let's see here. It allows me to do it here. It doesn't allow me to do it. All right. So uh, because this is a unique material, I'm going to have to make another layer for this. So again, I'll just come over here and add a fill layer. And I'll just gonna say uh, adding adding anisotropic level. We have to actually increase the level to turn it on. So in this case, I'm not producing any color, roughness, normal, height. Uh, but I am going to punch out angle and level. So I'm going to increase the, uh, the angle here, as you can see. And it's not doing anything. So what I need to do is increase the level, the uh, level amount. So you can see we're... Uh, ramping it up, and you don't want to go up to 1, it goes to black, but I can just put it somewhere around like 0.9. And the angle now is accessible where I can turn it from 90 degrees to, uh, you know, straight up, side to side, or straight up. But the problem you're seeing here is the fact that these areas right here are not actually matching up correctly. This, ent this entire area is not matching up correctly. And that's because um, <clears throat> this right here, uh, the UVs are 90 degrees rotated. As you can see, so everything that you, when you deal with anisotropic angle, it's based on your UVs. Even if you were to come in here and set this to triplanar, it's not going to change anything. It is based on your UV layout that dictates, uh, you know, what is anisotropic uh, angle. So with that said, we have to do some masking to kind of paint this correctly. So with that being the added level, we we kind of set this to a certain angle. And what I'm going to do is add a option here for, I'll just add another uh, fill layer here. And we're going to basically come in here and paint a different angle. So this is going to override the previous angle. So you can see if I turn this off, we have that angle. And then if I take this angle and bring it up, I'm going to have it be rotated 90 degrees. You can see it best in the UV la uh, layout like that. Okay, so that's a 90 degree uh, layout and yeah that should be good okay so with that said we can go ahead and just call this um, angle 90 degrees and we will add a mask to this so I'm going to add a black mask and we're going to add in some information so I'm going to paint with my brush but I'm going to set my paint to UVs so that I don't get some wrapping effect and what I can do is uh, just paint this for this specific angle right here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint all these goodies like this. So these down here are getting a 90 degree rotation treatment uh, so that they match up. And again, I'll just hit X to delete any areas that I don't want. So now if we take a look, everything should match up correctly in the direction that it should be facing. See that? So if I turn this off, you'll see the, d the difference. See that? So the angle at which the light should be sheening from top to bottom. But if you see from here, it's, it's, uh, it's basically going from left to right. So by turning this on, I can, you know, mess with this and kind of just, you know, play with the information. 
And what's rather interesting in this case is uh, the the actual compositing uh, information for the angle here is normal. So that's rather interesting. So again, if you hit the letter C, go through, you could see here's my anisotropic level. I also need to paint this area in here because uh, this this isn't, I believe this is 9 degrees off compared to the one piece. So then if I hit M now, you could see that everything feels correct versus this, which doesn't feel correct in any respects. Um, I would say it'd probably be best if we rotated the whole thing using the opposite information. So for instance, the only thing that's flawed here would be the sphere, right? So again, you can paint based on if there's a 90 degree offset, and I could just, you can see as I rotate the light, lighting information here, that we're getting a sheen up and down as opposed to left and right. So there is a continuity throughout this whole thing. So imagine, you know, how is this helpful? Well, this is a building that's near Chicago where I live, and it, I always walk past it, and you can see that it has an anisotropic information that kind of goes up and down here. So imagine if these two pillars were on a UV set and one was rotated 90 degrees, you would have to paint this one with a different angle so that they both would match up and have the same anisotropy. So that's where this can be very uh, beneficial. Last thing you can do is come in here, and I'll just... Uh, basically clear my mask in here. And with the angle, you can come in here and add some interesting artifacts and so forth. So if I go to procedurals and add like an interesting uh, setup here, so what I'll do is add a fill layer here for the mask. And then I'll just throw in this pattern into the grayscale. And now you can see if I just go ahead and scale this up a little bit, I get some interesting looks and depending on my angle change, so you can see the difference between the angle on the original here if I take a look at it here, uh, oops, the original angle that I put in here for this is 0.91. So if I come over here and get this close to 0.91, you could see this information will actually go away to a certain degree. It won't go away, but there'll be just a slight change. And the reason why this is happening is it should be like painting and so forth. So, yeah, so again, you could see you can get all types of really cool effects that have to do with direction blur of uh, the way this is. And some would say that this can be done by changing the roughness values, um, but it does give you an open door for some interesting uh, ways to work where you're getting an up and down uh, reflection versus a side to side reflection in some of these. So that's it.